I have chosen to hijack G4G for my own ends to uh, try to give out this award every two years. It seems like a fun opportunity and allows me to further justify coming to see you all, which is great. Uh, before I do that, one quick note from yesterday. Um, after uh, Tim Chartier gave his talk in which he showed some TSP art, uh, you may know that Bob Bosch and I did some work on that. And I just wanted to mention, this is, this is useful if you're, if you're a fan of TSP art, that uh, if you perform the stippling process from TSP art, uh, but don't draw the path, it makes a, a really fun, let's see if this uh, shows up, uh, a really fun uh, connect the dots puzzle <laughs> that is a good way to while away the, uh, the hours. This should give you an extreme close up in a second. But let me move on to talk about the journal. So, Journal of Math and Art uh, was created by the founding editor, Gary Greenfield, and we started publishing in 2007. Gary's here if you want to talk to him about his experience. And there's going to be a slide that shows this in, uh, in the next, sometime in the next six minutes. There we go. And so we've been publishing roughly every three months since uh, 2007. If you were here for my talk yesterday, you know that in fact, I happen to have been the author of the very first paper published in JMA as well, which was about mazes. Um, uh, we are published by Taylor and Francis in the UK. I have a sample issue here in my hand. There are more sample issues out on the table that you can have if you want. They look like they're for sale along with all the other books, but you're welcome to take one. And if anybody wants this one, now that I've held it up, you're welcome to it as well. Um, there's a, a, a heavy overlap between the Journal of Math and Art and, uh, and the audience here. So just for fun, if you are editor, associate editor, former editor, member of the editorial board, put up your hand. So you can see there's a, they're scattered around. Authors, put up your hands if you're here. Uh, people who have reviewed for the journal. You can see that there's, there's a good smattering of people. I guess, you know what, maybe I don't want to, anonymous reviewers, put up your hands. <laughs> All right. Um, the journal, as you may know, is focused on exposing novel research level connections between mathematics and art, and we'd love to have new work submitted on that subject. So if you have any ideas for things that you'd like to say in this journal, please come talk to me because I'd love to hear about it. Um, one of the things that the journal now does and has done once before and now again this year is we hand out a biennial outstanding paper award. So you may remember that I gave out the first, or I announced the, the winner of the first award two years ago right here, and it was Bob Bosch who is sitting around somewhere, so I will mention him again. So Bob won for his paper about, uh, actually related to TSP art, right? Um, but in a specific context that we won't go into here. Uh, so, but I'm very pleased to be able to do this again. So let me get right on, there's a description of the award there. That's not, you know, it's not crucial that you know the exact text of the award. I guess if you have a paper in mind, you can say, well, how do I make sure it does exactly this? That would be good to know. So let me mention the nominees, and I'm very excited because, of course, uh, there is, again, there's an overlap between uh, JMA authors and this audience, and some of the nominees are probably in this room, and they don't know it yet. So uh, nobody knows who the nominees are who won, uh, at least not, uh, uh, only, I think there's only one person in the room apart from me who actually knows who won the award, for reasons I'll get into in a second. Um, just so you know, the associate editors were tasked with identifying a short list of nominees by sending their votes to me. So I collated a list of nominees, and here they are. We're going to do this Oscar style, right? And the nominees for the 2014 Outstanding Paper Award are, first of all, and these are going to be things you've probably seen before. Susan Goldstein and Ellie Baker for their wonderful paper. Yes, you might remember. A uh, wonderful paper about turning wallpaper patterns into beaded crochet uh, bracelets. Susan had these bracelets with her, right, two years ago. Or where are you, Susan? Um, yeah, so Susan's right over there. And I believe there was some drama, right, because the bracelets went missing for a time and then turned up again later, right? So there's some dramatic tension in this paper as well. But uh, lovely work on designing beaded crochet bracelets. We had a paper by Neil Dodgson, who is a computer science professor at Cambridge, the only person on this list who actually doesn't come to G4G. Everybody else will. Uh, and he did some lovely research on taking these stripe paintings by Bridget Riley and analyzing statistically the distribution of colors of the stripes and trying to see if you could then convince a computer program to create similar distributions of colored stripes. 
These are just very narrow cross sections of the paintings. The paintings themselves are enormous and very tall. So, uh, but this is, a, this is sort of a cool visualization just to throw out at you. We have uh, Robert Lang's paper on producing puzzle cubes based on this traditional Spanish paper folding shape called the, uh, the pajarita, this is kind of a bird shape. And uh, it's a great paper where he, he figured out how to get every possible configuration of pajaritas on the faces of these cubes and then characterized the resulting cubes by how difficult they were to solve and, uh, and built up to some nice results. And, and, and of course, Robert Lang is known to everybody here. He was here two years ago. He is foolishly not here this year to see this slide. Sorry, Robert. And then finally, you already saw this this morning. This was a paper by Henry Sagerman and Jeffrey Irving, who are both here today, of course. And it was their lovely work on stacking up, um, it, stacking up generations in a fractal curve and then interpolating a surface along there to get a really nice sculpture. And so uh, Robert Fadauer's talk this morning was a sculpture that was inspired by some of these forms. All right, so the associate editors produced a short list of nominees. The short list was then sent out to our elite jury of, uh, of art math experts who then were tasked with picking a winner. And just so you know, one, juror, one member of the jury is here, and um, that's Tom Banshoff, who's uh, lurking around somewhere. So he was on, there he is right there. He was a member of the jury. The other members, Alvy Ray Smith, who was here two years ago, but is not here this year. Helaman Ferguson, who I don't know if he's come to G4G, but he will be known to many of you as a mathematical sculptor. And uh, uh, Jessica Rosencrantz and Jesse Lewis Rosenberg, uh, no, I'm not getting those names right, am I? Rosen, is it Rosencrantz and Rosenberg? I can't remember, I apologize. They're not here, but I apologize for if, I, if I messed up their names. Anyway, they are better known on the internet as Nervous System, the creators of a wide variety of organic looking 3D prints. Uh, so they were the fourth member, they were collectively the fourth member of the jury. And they got together, and I guess this is the moment that we, you know, we have to do the Oscar thing. Sorry, so, have an, oh, so, okay. <laughs> anyway, thanks very much, and uh, oh, my time really is up. Well, I better do this quickly. I look in the envelope, and well, that's weird, it's not, uh, Oh, 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 it's, oh, okay, so maybe this tells you, right? It's not a card with a name on it, but it is in fact a pajarita. So congratulations very much to Robert Lang for his wonderful paper. Yeah, you know, if you, he's not here, so please call him up and clap at him, that would be helpful. It's a really wonderful paper because it's unusual in that it omits its main result. The, the paper builds up to the hardest possible puzzle cube, and then he says, and I leave the solution of this cube as an exercise to the reader, which is kind of, a, th that the fact that you can get away with this is a lot of fun. Anyway, so if you want to know more about the journal, there's a URL that allows you to find it or do a web search on Journal of Math and Art, and that's me at the bottom if you want to reach me, or please come up and talk to me if you want. Anyway, thanks. All right. Uh...